Hello there kids, today we are going to talk about earthquakes and volcanoes. Okay, so forces that changes Earth's surface include earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Okay, so the dangers of earthquakes, no? kung mapapansin nyo dito at this point, tingnan nyo. I'm quite sure someone, syempre, I'm hindi talaga sure na may namatay pero may, na, may na-injure talaga dito at some point, no? So, delicado. That's why it is important for you to at least go to an open area when an earthquake is happening. Okay. So, volcanic eruption din. So, so far dito sa atin, no, wala, hindi naman tayo nakaka-experience masyado ng, I mean, in our area sa Zamboanga City. Okay. So, these forces are generated just underneath the surface of Earth, called the fault line. What is an earthquake? So, an earthquake is the vibration or tremor of Earth's crust. The place where the, f the earthquake originates is called focus. Okay. This is called a focus kung saan talaga nag-originate yung, yung uh, earthquake. Okay. While epicenter is the surface directly above focus. So, kung ito yung surface na yan, yan talaga yung epicenter. Okay. Uh, yung focus refers to saan talaga nag-originate yung movement. Okay. Itong movement na to. While if you're going to trace it, it iaakyat nyo to the surface of earth that this is the epicenter dun siya na kumbaga from top view that is the epicenter of the earthquake pero yung yung direction niya is in depth pa nandyan talaga sa baba okay the amount of energy released by an earthquake is measured using an instrument called seismograph okay yung seismograph na yan yan ang, yan ang nag uh, base nag nalalaman natin kung nagkakaroon ng earthquake and such of movement or any vibration or tremor nga that is happening. Even yung mga, hindi lang earthquake ang nami-measure ng mga ganyang instrument. We also have yung mga malalakas na bombs, no? Yung ginagamit nila, yung mga atomic bombs and such. Uh, dyan nalalaman yung kapag, may nag kapag nagkakaroon ng movement. As long as there is a movement uh, within the earth's crust or a tremor, the vibration. So dyan nalalaman na may certain activity na nangyayari. Kasi there are cases that uh, the seismograph basically uh, records. Pero hindi naman pala yun earthquake. Hindi nila na-recorded as earthquake. Okay. So the measurement of energy released by an earthquake is called magnitude. And the highest recorded is at magnitude 9.5. So this is matagal na nangyari. Okay. Highest magnitude recorded is 9.5. Okay. Again, the measurement of energy released by an earthquake is called magnitude. Okay? While the measurement of strength of shaking caused by the release is called intensity. Okay? The energy released, uh, the, yung, yung measurement of uh, strength niya, the shaking, is called intensity. So, ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng magnitude na to? Magnitude versus intensity. So, just imagine yourself right now. You're going to punch your wall. Your wall is made of cement. Okay? Cement lang yan siya. If you're going to punch it with, the, with a certain amount of strength, yung energy ninyo, walang mangyayari sa, sa wall ninyo. ba? But if you're going to apply the same amount of strength to a thin wood, most likely, yung wood na yan, very thin wood, mangyayari sa wood is mababali. ba? So, if you notice that you apply the same energy, so that's your magnitude. Okay? That's your magnitude. The damage brought by the your punch, the energy that you released, is called intensity. So the moment na sinuntok nyo yung, yung cement wall ninyo, nothing happened. So let's say intensity 1, ganun lang. Or may nangyari man siguro shaking or ano, pero very minimal. Intensity 1. While yung pagsuntok ninyo ngayon sa, sa very thin wood, with the same amount of energy, nabali yung wood. Let's say intensity 7, intensity 8. Nabali talaga siya. So, you can see now the difference between magnitude and intensity. Okay? So, yan ang relationship between both. Magnitude is just the amount of energy, re or refers to the amount of energy released, while intensity is referred to the damage or the strength brought by the release of energy. Okay? So, medyo confusing yan. Uh, marami until now are confused. Even adults are confused between the difference between magnitude and intensity. So, I want you to understand with that example 
Kasi buti na lang ang online class ngayon. Kasi kung hindi online class, I might be doing it to you in actual. <laughs> okay? Just kidding. Of course, hindi ko kayo susuntukin sa face ninyo. So anyway, earthquakes can destroy structures. Okay? That's that's very destructive. No, Ito, like ito. Siguro naka-experience ng intensity 7, intensity 8, possibly 9. Pero pag intensity 10 ito, at siguro flat na yung lahat dyan, even this, this part here. So, pos possible baka intensity 6 lang or 7 in a long duration. So, depende kasi yan eh. There are lots of factors that can affect the the intensity. It depends kasi. So, can cause cracks on ground, liquefaction, landslides, and even tsunamis. So, for example, ito. This is one example of cracks. No? Earthquakes can basically cause cracks on, the, on ground, liquefaction, landslides, and even tsunamis. So, in this case, Ang nangyayari dyan is nag-open, nag-crack yung daanan. So, in this, imagine nyo na lang to, if ito nangyayari sa Zamboanga. This will take years for Zamboanga City to recover. No? Kasi maliit na damage pa lang ang tagal-tagal na. Ano na lang siguro pag ganito yung damage na yan. So, technically, Zamboanga City is not ready. Even with uh, a very high history of earthquake incidents no diyan sa Sulu Trench and sa Cotabato Trench so wala hindi talaga prepared sa Mugan City to be honest and this is an example of liquefaction liquefaction refers to parang nagi lumalambot yung land parang parang nagiging combination of soil and water eventually nagsisink no so what happens is that uh nagde-rise yung level of water at some point in which yung sand na yan, nagiging parang wobbly na siya. Nagiging sandy na yung soil. So, lumalambot to a point of the structure on it can will, will be damaged, no? So, that's quite sad for that. So, anyway, to sum it all up, liquefaction technically is like uh, the softening of the ground. Okay? So, parang ganito. A better illustration. So, ang nangyayari parang the the building the structure occupy the space and in which the soil is forced to move outwards okay this is an example of a landslide so imagine nyo na lang uh, syempre looking at or judging at the houses here so imagine nyo yan dyan, that this uh, earlier kung wala dito nangyari so these are also uh, houses here there are also houses here but but because of this uh, tremor earthquake shaking of the ground gumalaw yan caused a gigantic landslide and somehow malas yung mga nakatira dito okay wala na I, if they were able to survive then that's good and of course ang pinaka na, nakakatakot sa lahat is ang tsunami and of course tsunami only happens when the earthquake is strong enough and also when it is a it, it happens in the ocean Tsunamis aren't possible if tsunamis, uh, I mean, sorry, tsunamis are aren't, are, aren't possible if earthquakes originated on land. Okay? Yung epicenter nila, like what I've said earlier, epicenter. If the epicenter is on land, for example, let's say ang Zamboanga. I'll draw Zamboanga. Okay, let's say, get it on Zamboanga. If the epicenter happened on land, even it's, if it's very strong, tsunami won't happen. But if it happened on the ocean, if the epicenter is on the ocean, tsunami is possible. Especially if it meets its generated energy. No, So, depende kasi yan eh. So, and of course, the aftermath kasi of uh, tsunami, imagine yun na lang yung force niya, no? This is, uh, the in Japan, this actually happened in Japan way back 2011, May, uh, March pala, sorry, March 11, 2011. This happened in in uh, Japan. So, ang Japan kasi, they, al they always experience earthquakes dyan. So, prepared talaga ang Japan sa earthquake. They even built a tsunami wall. Uh, it's, in just that, it's just that unfortunate in this point, in, at this point, very strong kasi talaga yung earthquake na nangyari. It was very strong. That is enough. Na itinan yun na nag-overflow na yung water talaga. Going over the, their tsunami built wall. Okay, which damaged a lot yan. And of course, worst part is the aftermath kasi. I imagine yung may barko na ngayon sa land. Okay? And this is not even funny. 
imagine nyo if this happened to, to us dito sa Zamboanga, I don't know if we will be able to survive that. No, depende na kasi. With that strength, magnitude 8.1 ata yun as far as I remember. So, uh, sobrang lakas yung effect. So, yun lang yung nangyari dyan sa Japan. So, yun na. They were able to recover naman in just a few months, years. Okay na sila kaagad. Sambuanga yun, I think until now, wala pa rin yan. <laughs> Philippines. Okay. Earthquakes are either caused by tectonic plate movements or a volcanic activity. Tectonic plate movement, the place where the edges of these plates meet, are called fault. So, alam nyo na to, yung parang puzzles nga, di ba? Where puzzle tends to fit, that's what you call yung fault. Ito. Where puzzle pieces tend to meet. Yung yellow outline na yan. Yan, oh, that's what you call the fault. So, a closer look, yan ang ibig sabihin ko kanina. Okay, ito. Where the puzzle pieces tend to fit, yan yung uh, fault. Okay. Fault refers to the fracture or the crack in the Earth's crust. There are three types of tectonic plate boundaries, namely the convergent boundary, divergent boundary, and transform boundary. So let's talk about the convergent boundary muna. Convergent boundaries. It is called convergent boundary when two plates collide. No? Yung, yung force between the two plates tend to push against one another push ang ang kwan nila ang force nila between the two plates in which at this point no as they collide one of the two plates get subducted under the other and this is called a subduction zone so as they push one another hindi naman sila pwede magform ng uh, uh, one should really go below go down no so this results to geohazards such as earthquakes and volcano. So yun na nga, like what I've said earlier, they, as they collide, one of the two plates gets subducted under the other. One goes under the other. As one goes through and even somehow magra-rise yan over and forms new land. No? As convergent boundaries, lithosphere is getting destroyed. It is getting destroyed. Nasisira itong point dito. It gets destroyed. Okay? Again, at convergent boundaries, lithospheres get destroyed. So, lithospheres refers to the surface nga, yung land surface na yan. Ito. Okay? So, nade-destroy yan. Nasisira. Which is this one. Nade-destroy. Nasisira. Divergent boundaries naman. It is called a divergent boundary when two plates are getting pushed apart. So kanina sinabi ko dito they they tend to collide, no? They push against each other. Dito naman they get pushed apart. So this goes there and this goes here. Yung, yung plates na yan. Okay? So ang nangyayari dito as plates drift apart, magma is being pushed to the surface. As magma cools, new land is being formed. So ano nangyayari ngayon because of this plate moving go towards this point? and this plate moving towards this point, nagkakaroon ng opening. And you already know, we have magma dyan sa baba. No. So, as it rises to the surface of the opening, it, it cools down and forms a new land. Nagpo-form siya ng new land. So, in this case, at the divergent boundaries, lithospheres are created. Nagkakaroon tayo ng bagong surface uh, of lithosphere. Nagkakaroon tayo ng surface of land, new. Again, kanina sa convergent boundary, lithospheres gets destroyed, are being are getting destroyed. While in divergent boundaries, lithospheres are created. Okay? Transform boundaries naman. So kanina sa convergent boundaries, again, i-drawing ko lang dito. They they basically push against one another. Sa divergent boundaries naman, ang nangyari is they push each other apart. Okay, summary yan dyan, ha? Sa so how the plates uh, tend to behave. Sa transform boundaries naman, it is called the transform boundary when two plates slide past each other. So, ibig sabihin sa transform boundary, nag-slide lang sila. It's either they go this way, they go uh, sideways ba? Depende na yan sa position kasi. As long as uh, hindi sila nag-interact uh, nag to a point of destroying nor creating a new surface. So, these plates are often called faults. So, dyan actually, 
mas mas marami maraming activity ang nangyayari yung earthquakes most okay most places pero yung sa Japan pala yung nangyari uh, in my understanding I think uh, yung example doon is like a convergent boundary kasi yung nangyari kasi doon parang for example ito yung surface no yung I'm referring to the convergent boundary and the one that happened in in uh, Japan So, yung land kanina, ganyan man yan, no? And as one goes below, parang ganyan. So, nangyari kasi, parang there's a flick. Nagkaroon ng flick. As this is pushing this one down, ang nangyari is nagkaroon ng flicker. This flick. As this one is pushing this surface down, nagkaroon ng flick. Nag-flick siya. Which triggered the tsunami. Okay, yun ay nag-trigger ng earthquake doon and which, which triggered the tsunami. Kaya ang, ang sobrang lakas ng nangyari doon. Okay. At transform boundaries, lithospheres are neither created or destroyed. Okay, sa convergent, lithospheres are getting destroyed. Sa divergent, okay, ilagay ko na lang, summary to ha. Um, I-erase ko muna to. Sa convergent, ang nangyayari is that it is it gets destroyed. We are talking about uh, bound uh, lithospheres, okay? Yung yung plates. Sa divergent naman, it uh, the we create a lithosphere, nagkakaroon ng creation of new surface. While dito naman sa transform boundary, we have neither none, wala. Nothing gets destroyed, nothing gets created. Okay? So, that's the difference between the three. Uh, you master that. Okay? Volcanoes. Volcanoes naman. No, buti na lang. Walang malapit dito na experience natin. Active. Ah. No, we don't have active ones dito sa atin. Okay. So, a volcano is a vent in the surface of Earth through which gases, hot rock, uh, hot rock fragments, and lava are ejected. Aside from tectonic plates, movements, volcanic eruptions acti or activities cause movement of the ground as well, which is one cause of earthquakes too. So we have the basic parts of a volcano. We have the crater. Crater yung opening yan siya. The mouth of the volcano. Vent is basically the opening of uh, in Earth's crust through the magma, through which magma flows out of the Earth's surface. So, Vent yan siya. Ito yung vent natin. The opening on Earth's crust through the through which magma flows out of Earth's surface. So, just to, to know the difference. A crate is parang butas yan. Pero yung main cause talaga dyan, yung, yung point na yan, kung saan lumalabas yung lava is called the vent. That's the difference between the two. This is the crate. This is the vent. Okay? So, different yan sila. And we also have the pipe, the connection between the vent and the magma chamber. So, from this point all the way down, why am I using this color? Okay, from this point, yung vent all the way down to the magma chamber is called the pipe. So, connection, parang sa, sa digestive system pa yan, it's like our esophagus which connects our mouth to our stomach. So cone, the representation of volcano shape, of course. How how the how, how volcanoes look like. Okay, we also have the magma, which is molten rock beneath Earth's surface. Okay, yan ang magma. So just to explain the difference between magma and uh, lava, yung magma is yung hindi pa na exposed. No, ito which is ito nang sa baba. This is called magma, which is not yet exposed to the surface of Earth, but once it gets exposed. Pag nasa labas na yan siya, this is now called a lava. Okay, lava na yan siya. That's, the di that's basically just the difference between the two. But the material, they're just the same. Molten rock. A magma is a molten rock. Okay, molten rock yan siya. In which lava is also a molten rock. It's just that the difference between the two is that yung lava is already exposed while yung magma is hindi pa na-exposed. Hindi pa siya lumabas sa surface. So, that's the difference between the two. So, magma chamber is a space where large pool of magma is stored under pressure. Okay? So, yan ang tawag natin sa magma. Magma chamber is basically just like a container filled with magma. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin yan. 
Okay, so volcanoes. So, syempre, uh, friction between rocks through magma chambers causes heat which melts rocks and form magmas. Yan na yung, yung main purpose dyan. Yung, yung mga rocks dyan, solid rocks that tend to grind one another, creating this intense heat. Uh, ito na yung nagme-melt sa rock dyan, which form magmas na. Okay? With the presence of heat, pressure builds up along the area. Siyempre, just like when you boil water, di ba? There's pressure when you boil water. So, gas tends to escape. So, parang the same lang din dito. It's quite the same here. So, ang nangyayari ngayon is that fume smoke will make its way out of the vent through the pipe. Kasi too much pressure na yung nasa loob eh. So, ang nangyayari daw then releases air. So, through the form of fumes or smoke. Okay. So, when pressure can no longer be held by the volcano structure, eruption occurs. Thus, causing movement of Earth's surface. Diyan na tayo nag experience ng earthquake. So, as volcanoes erupt, magma rises to the surface. So, as magma rises, again ha, ito yung magma. So, as magma rises to the surface, this is now called a lava. Lava flow na yan siya. This is now the flow of lava. Okay? So, ganun lang. Ganun lang yan. So, yan ang nakakatakot. Vol volcanic eruption. It will basically cause an earthquake. Movement. Shaking of the ground. Malakas yan. Kasi nasa surface yan eh. We are not talking about yung earthquake na paminsan nasa baba. Although, syempre, powerful pa rin talaga ang earthquake. Or technically, yung, yung nagyayari about that uh, earthquake that is being, being generated by tectonic plates. While ito naman is an earthquake that is caused by volcanic eruption, which is nandyan na sa surface. So, I think te tectonic plates, ma mas malakas pa rin talaga. Kasi it can basically generate the movement from uh, underneath, no? Compared to ito nasa surface. Though you will still feel the the tremor, the movement. Pero at least, dyan lang yung surface na lang ang maka-experience nyan. Hindi na yung sa baba. Okay? So anyway, that's all about for this week. Earthquakes and volcanoes. I hope you learned something new.